Okay, so uh, welcome everyone. Um, let's get started. So um, today, I think we have a treat. Uh, it's my really great uh, pleasure to uh, to welcome today's uh, speaker, Dr. Uh, Feng Shao from uh, NIPS, uh, Beijing. And uh, <clears throat> I think most of us actually know Feng, uh, or at least his work very well. So uh, currently, Feng is um, the deputy director of uh, National Institute of uh, Bi Biological Sciences, uh, which is NIPS. So um, I think I just to give a brief introduction. Uh, so Feng actually uh, finishes uh, undergraduate st study in Beijing University, and then further pursue his uh, PhD in the University of Michigan. Um, from uh, 2000. Three, uh, he did a very brief postdoc in UCSD and following up with another postdoc in uh, Harvard Medical School, which also totally uh, approximate two years. So after that, Feng moved to NIPS, started his career and uh, with his own uh, independent uh, laboratory. So from 2005 until now, uh, so Feng, uh, stay in NIPS and then start from assistant investigator to full investigator and now it's the um, deputy director of the NIPS. So I'm not gonna go to diving his publications because it's just too much. I think uh, his total uh, publication is uh, more citation over 20,000. I think it's really remarkable. Uh, I think Feng's lab um, is uh, mainly interested in studying molecular mechanism of uh, bacterial infection and host innate immunity defense. At the same time, he also study how the host uses its innate immune system to, um, to react with bacterial infection, particularly the inflammasome pathway in macrophages. Uh, um, his lab also combined different approaches, uh, including biomedical reconstitution, cell biology, and uh, mouse genetics to um, identify new components in pathogen-induced inflammasome activation, and then to further uh, review the underlying uh, machinery. Uh, there's, it's really remarkable how many uh, recognitions, how many titles. I think uh, I'm just gonna give a few of Feng's achievement. Uh, he's a member of German National Academy of Science, also a fellow of Chinese Academy of uh, Medical Sciences, uh, also um, a member of Chinese Academy of Sciences. Uh, he really has a lot of honors and awards. Uh, I think mainly I just mentioned that he's the uh, recipient of the second national award of excellence of in excellence. innovation in 2020. Uh, 2020. Um, he also got Future Science uh, Prize in 2019, and then he's also the awards uh, recipient, uh, recipient of Heliang Heli uh, Foundation Awards. Uh, I think one thing I particularly would like to uh, emphasize is his lab is really um, culture. A lot of uh, great students and postdoc fellows who's now actually uh, start their independent research uh, in different area and different institutions. I think nowadays it's particularly appreciated because I think we all need a mentor like Feng give a great uh, guidance and then also um, share the great sciences. So without further ado, I think I'm gonna give Feng's um, platform and I think he's gonna talk about the parasitosis in antibacterial and anti-tumor uh, immunity. So welcome, thank you for doing this Feng. Oh, thanks, Sichuan, and uh, it's really a, a great pleasure to um, have the opportunity to share our uh, work with you since uh, we cannot uh, see each other or meet each other in person. So um, if you have, uh, uh, among the audience, if you have any questions about uh, my presentation later on, you can just uh, drop me uh, an email, so uh, I'll respond. So uh, today I would just focus on my uh, talk on uh, pyroptotic cell deaths. And this uh, cell death was originally observed in bacterial infection. And then the concept of uh, this cell death has evolved uh, quite a bit uh, in, the, in the past few years. And now uh, we have some new data suggesting that this cell death may 
also induce uh, endotumor immunity. So, um, okay. And in this talk, I'll, I'll divide my talk into three parts. And the first about uh, 10 minutes, I will uh, give you some uh, background and introduction about uh, inner immunity, inflammasome, and pyroptosis, and uh, the discovery of uh, gastrin D. And then uh, in the second part, I'll, uh, I'll discuss our recent work on how uh, pyroptosis uh, mediated in the immune defense against the bacterial infection and how uh, some bacterial pathogens have hijacked uh, this uh, pyroptotic death pathway uh, to uh, evade from uh, host immunity. And uh, lastly, I'll, uh, I'll talk about um, uh, pyro the role of pyroptotic cell death in cancer and uh, cancer immunity. Uh, in that part, I'll mainly talk about gastrin E and gastrin B. So uh, in, in the immunity, we all know this uh, toll receptor pathway, and, uh, but um, uh, you probably don't uh, uh, remember that the toll pathways, toll receptors are membrane bound proteins. And uh, particularly for those uh, toll receptors that recognize uh, bacterial products, they are only uh, a plasma membrane on the cell surface. So in that regard, a toll receptor can deal with uh, extracellular bacterial uh, pathogens. However, we have another group of uh, bacterial pathogens, uh, such as uh, tuberculosis or Salmonella or Shigella. And those bacterial pathogens, they were invaded into the cytosol space. So in that uh, context, the toll receptor will not be able to recognize intracellular uh, bacterial infection. So starting from about 2007, the central question in my lab is uh, how, how does the inner immune system uh, uh, deal with or recognize bacterial infection and initiate a, a inner in, a defense response, uh, in this, particularly in the cytosol space. So uh, here I'm gonna show you a, a, very, a movie recording a very simple experiment. In this experiment, uh, if we uh, infect macrophages, with uh, intracellular bacteria like uh, Shigella fraxinari or Salmonella typhomurin. And at the same time, we add some PI, uh, propylene iota, into the cell culture medium um, to report uh, uh, membrane disruption or report uh, lytic cell deaths. So as you can see, uh, uh, the macrophages are, um, do not engulf, do not uptake a PI. However, after being infected by uh, those bacteria, the macrophages, the, uh, they uptake uh, propylene iota, suggest, suggesting that those macrophages undergo uh, explosive lytic deaths. And this is the pyroptosis that I'm going to discuss uh, today. So basically, uh, I, uh, uh, macrophages, once uh, infected by intracellular bacteria, invasive bacteria, their plasma membrane integrity was disrupted and then uh, the dye, the DNA dye, uh, uh, went into the nuclear and the nuclear is already overstand and the whole cells turn into red. So the cells are dying. And many other bacterial infection will cause more or less a similar kind of uh, pyroptotic uh, cell death. So uh, not only bacterial infection, even some uh, endogenous uh, dams, uh, we call dangerous associated molecular patterns like ATP, if you treat the macrophage with uh, uh, extracellular ATP, the macrophage will also die out of pyroptosis. And this phenomenon uh, was early discovered in 1986 and later on in, uh, in 1992, but for a very long time, and this cell death was misregarded as a bacterial valence mechanism. However, in fact, uh, it's actually the opposite. It is not the bacteria that want to kill us, it is our our uh, cells that uh, sense the bacterial infection and then commit the cell death, uh, uh, um, commit the cell death to induce our immune response. So basically, the cell death is not a bacterial valence; it's not a weapon of bacteria, but it's a host immune defense response. And in ninety, uh, I think it's ninety ninety six, and uh, uh, Zeklinski, Arturo Zeklinski's lab discovered that. This cell does require a caspase uh, called a caspase one. And that brings another uh, misunderstanding about this uh, form of cell death. So uh, caspase one actually was first discovered as an enzyme to process interleukin one beta in 1992 in this uh, two very beautiful 
uh, science and nature paper are using biochemical fractionation approach to um, identify the proteolytic activity that is responsible for uh, cleaving uh, the precursor of interleukin-1 beta, that was caspase-1. So caspase-1 was first discovered in the context of inflammation and uh, immunology. However, one year later, one year later, uh, uh, Bob Powell's lab at MIT uh, 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 cloned a gene in C. elegans called SAS3. So this SAS3 uh, is required for uh, apoptotic cell deaths during uh, the worm development. And at that time, uh, there is only one homolog in mammals that uh, is homologous to SAS3, which is caspase 1. So uh, in the 90s, when, with the uh, progressing of molecular biology, then uh, a, a numerous, a numerous caspases were then uh, cloned subsequently. But however, because of the, uh, the, the discovery of SAS3, which is equivalent to caspase 9, there is a, a critical role in uh, apoptotic deaths. And then the entire caspase family, for some reason, was mi uh, mislinked to apoptosis in the 90s. So now we know that apoptosis is probably more involved in uh, develop in the cell deaths or in apoptosis during uh, uh, animal development. For example, like this uh, tadpole uh, uh, development into uh, frogs and the tail uh, that is uh, eliminated by uh, apoptosis. So, um, so apoptosis clearly plays a key role in removal of cells and tissues during normal animal development. So uh, if, if this is cell pyroptosis, I just show you that as a response, as a host immune response to bacterial infection, then uh, caspase one needs to be activated by a uh, innate immune sensor pathway, which is called a uh, inflammasome pathway. And I believe many of you have uh, uh, touched on this. And the canonical inflammasome pathway is mediated by a member of the non like receptor family and uh, among uh, like an RP3 which has been heated and studied in the past uh, 10 years. So the, the, the non-like receptors, uh, they, they basically serve as a receptor in the cytosol uh, to recognize uh, bacterial products or, or some danger signals and then recruit adapter protein ASK and then further recruit uh, the pro-caspase 1, pro-caspase 1 become activated into this uh, tetramor active form. So, uh, uh, we have, uh, we have characterized several uh, inflammasome pathways uh, in, in the past uh, 10 years. For example, uh, we identify the NAVES, which is a subfamily of non like receptor uh, that serve as a bona fide, uh, in a biochemical sense, uh, are receptors for bacterial flagellin and uh, components of the, uh, the type three uh, secretion products in gram-negative bacteria. So, um, and then active caspase one will trigger cell deaths in addition to process into looking one beta and as well as into looking 18. So this is cytokine response also suggests that the pyroptosis is a, a form of a pro-inflammatory cell deaths. Indeed, uh, uh, among all the cell deaths we now know, pyroptosis is probably the most uh, inflammatory, pro-inflammatory form of, of, of programmed cell deaths. In addition to caspase 1, uh, uh, in, there is another caspase called caspase 11 in mice. In human, is caspase 4 and 5. And uh, 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 Richard Dixon's lab and my lab, uh, uh, in the last few years, we characterized that uh, caspase 11, 4, and 5 are indeed intracellular receptors for cytosolic lipopolysaccharide from gram negative bacteria. So the lipid A moiety of LPS will uh, be recognized by the car domain, by the car domain of caspase 11, and that will induce oligomerization of caspase 11, and eventually uh, uh, caspase 11 will also induce uh, cell deaths. And uh, uh, there are two important differences of the caspase 11 pathway from the caspase 1 pathway. First, uh, the caspase 11 uh, pathway does not process into leukine. It only, it only trigger uh, pyroptotic cell deaths. And secondly, the caspase 1 pathway is mainly present in macrophage or monocytic cells, but the caspase 11 or caspase 4 pathway, 4 and 5 pathway, are mainly present in non macrophage cells, in, uh, in epicellular cells or endocellular cells, you know, uh, uh, because those cells are more frequently encountering 
uh, uh, bacterial infection uh, to recognize so that they can recognize LPS. So uh, uh, before I get into the, uh, the mechanism of pyroptosis, I want to use this movie to show, to uh, uh, illustrate to you what is the real difference between apoptosis and pyroptosis and uh, in a uh, morphological uh, sense. And you can see in apoptosis, the cells shrink and the cell body fragmented into small vesicles. But the key feature for apoptosis is that the plasma membrane integrity is maintained. So for pure apoptosis, the, uh, uh, there's no leakage of cytosolic contents and the plasma membrane uh, integrity is maintained. So, and then not only that, uh, the phosphatidylserine will be flipped out from the inner leaflet of plasma membrane to the outer leaflet. So then uh, that serves as an engulfing signal, eat me signal for macrophages. So apoptotic cell uh, death, the cells will be engulfed or, or phagocytosed by, uh, by macrophages instantly. And which means that apoptosis will not trigger inflammation. It's a clean form, it's a clean death. And on the right side, you see the pyrotosis here. We did not add the uh, propylene iodide so that you can see uh, the morphology more clearly. You see the cells swell and as the bubbles, uh, big bubbles blowing out from the plasma membrane. Eventually, uh, the membrane undergo lysis and that releases cytosolic contents, which will trigger strong uh, inflammatory response. So you, you can see from these two movies, uh, morphologically, apoptosis is shrinking uh, plasma membrane integrity is maintained and it's uh, engulfed by, by macrophages. But the pyroptosis morphology is characterized by swelling, membrane lysis, and release of cytosolic contents. And biologically, apoptosis does not trigger inflammation. That's why it's more important and more involved in physiological developmental process, while pyroptosis will trigger strong inflammatory response. So it's more a pathological response uh, is reduced by bacterial infection or other uh, stress conditions. So what is the execution mechanism? And again, in, 2000, uh, in 2015, uh, Richard Dixon's lab and my lab, we independently uh, identified this gene called uh, gastomin D. So we performed a genome-wide genome CRISPR-Cas9 screen to look for genes that are essential for uh, caspase 1 or caspase 11 induced pyroptosis. So uh, basically, in uh, uh, downstream of caspase 1 or caspase 11, you, you critically need this gastomin D if you knock it out and there's no pyroptosis. And gastomin D encodes a protein about 500 amino acids, um, the two domains and terminal domain, C terminal domain. These two domains uh, bind to each other that keeps the protein in the auto-inhibited state uh, in the absence of caspase activation. So once caspase 1 or caspase 11 are activated by upstream inflammatory signals, in for example, in response to bacterial infection or other uh, stimula stimulus, and caspase 1 and 11 will cleave this uh, gastamin D protein after this FLTD motif within the interdomain linker region and that will uh, liberate the N-terminal domain. This N-terminal domain will undergo conformation of change uh, uh, upon binding to uh, membranes or, or lipids in the membranes. This, uh, uh, along with dramatic uh, conformation of change, the N-terminal domain of gastamin D will oligomerize into a large pores, a very large pores, uh, then that will be, uh, the pores will be inserted into the membranes. You see there are multiple uh, pores of regular shape and size in this uh, artificial uh, uh, lipid bilayer. And uh, uh, how was lab at Harvard determined the prime EM structure of the entire uh, gastomin pore? You can see that, and the pore is quite large. And this region, this beta sheet region, will be uh, inserted into the uh, uh, membrane. For each pore, you have about uh, 27 to 28 uh, protomos. protomos which basically is the N-terminal domain of gastamin D uh, that is released by caspase cleavage. Once you have multiple pores formed on the plasma membrane, it will uh, disrupt the uh, osmotic potential. Disrupt, it will disrupt the os osmotic potential and then water will go inside 
and the uh, pyrotonic cells will swell and eventually undergo uh, a burst and a membrane lysis. So uh, uh, with the discovery of gastamin D and the mechanistic uh, um, uh, uh, explanation, we have a complete understanding of, of, of what is the molecular mechanism of pyroptosis now. So uh, as I mentioned that active caspase one and 11 will cleave this uh, uh, FLTD motif. So some of you may know that in the, in the caspase biochemistry field, all the caspases are known to cleave after an aspartic acid residue with a specificity to, a, to the tetrapeptide sequence uh, in, the, uh, in the cleavage site. So th that has been a dogma in the caspase biochemistry or structural biology field. So different caspases will recognize different tetrapeptide in their, in their cognate uh, substrates. However, this appears to be not the case for uh, gastamin D uh, cleavage by caspase 1 and 11. In this paper uh, uh, published last year, uh, we found that uh, the caspase, the dimeric caspase 11, <laughs> uh, caspase 1, <laughs> caspase 2, will uh, uh, recognize this C terminal domain, recognize this C terminal domain of gastamin D. And this rec enzyme substrate recognition is key for uh, active caspase 1 and 11 to specifically recognize gastamin D and then cleave after this aspartic acid residue. Uh, and in fact, it, due to the uh, exocyte, me exocyte mediated enzyme substrate recognition, the sequence of the tetrapeptide is not important. You can generate a mutation into, uh, of, uh, 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 into this FLT uh, motif into triple alanine, you still get an efficient cleavage of gastamin D. So this is a feature, uh, 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 this is a feature uh, different from all other uh, uh, substrate, caspase substrates when uh, cleaved by the caspase. So it means that it's a tetrapeptide uh, independent cleavage. So if you are interested in biochemistry, you can uh, uh, look over this paper. Now I'm going to uh, get into the second part of my talk uh, about the role of gas uh, pyroptosis in antibacterial uh, host immune de defense response. So as I mentioned that pyroptosis was discovered in the context of bacterial infection. If we gen uh, generate not gastamin D knockout mice and infect mice with various, various types of bacterial pathogens, for example, a chromobacterium violation, uh, and this bacteria will be recognized by the NAEP MRC4 caspase 1 canonical inflammasome. So uh, the flagellin in the bacteria is recognized by this re uh, inflammasome receptor called the NAEPs that we identify. So in white time mice, this pathway will be activated to induce an immune defense response through uh, gastamin D dependent pyroptosis. So you see, white time mice can survive. Uh, a southern uh, inf uh, bacteria infection. However, if we knock out any gene in this pathway, the NAPES, the RC4, caspase 1, gastamin D, the mice now are susceptible to the same dose of chromobacterial infection, and the mice will die within one week, uh, the knockout mice like RC4, gastamin D knockout mice. So if you check out the bacterial load or bacterial replication in the liver of, or spleen, uh, of the infected mice, you see that there are, uh, uh, there are two order of magnitude higher bacterial load uh, in, the, in the knockout mice uh, in their liver and the spring than the white type mice. So basically, if you knock out this pathway, you knock out gastamin D, and the bacteria will replicate extensively, and eventually the mice will die out of massive uh, bacterial replication. And the same story, uh, the same is true with another bacteria called the Francisella uh, 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 novicidal infection. And this bacteria is recognized by the M2 inflammasome, and the downstream is the same. And the double-strand DNA, double-strand DNA will leak out from the bacteria and then recognized by this double-strand DNA inflammasome receptor called M2. And then you can see that white time mice, they can survive the infection. Caspase knockout mice or gastamin D knockout mice, they die out of the infection. Uh, they, they, they cannot limit or restrict, restrict uh, bacterial replication. You can, see, uh, you can see this in, uh, there are a lot of uh, bacterial rep, 
replicating in the level of the spleen of the knockout, castrazo gastrinity knockout mice. However, for uh, both experiments, we cannot uh, attribute the function or the phenotype uh, solely to gastrin D, uh, 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 the role of pyroptosis, because when we knock out gastrin D, we also, we, uh, we also block I1 and I18 secretion, because the pore, as I mentioned, the pore actually serve as a conduit for uh, mature I1 beta and I18 to get out of the inflammatory cells. Uh, there are uh, uh, multiple, there are uh, lots of uh, evidence in the literature that uh, gastamin D not only make pores to kill cells, but also the gastamin D pore is important, is essential for secretion of mature I1 beta and IL-18. So that means if we knock out gastamin D, we also, not, we also eliminate the cytokine response downstream of uh, canonical inflammatory activation. So to really pinpoint uh, 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 the role of pyroptosis rather than cytokine response in uh, antibacterial immune defense response, we then turn to another bacteria called a shigella fractionary. Uh, this bacteria is intracellular free living, intracellular free living. You know, many of the intracellular bacteria, they live or they reside in a vacuum structure, but you, uh, uh, shigella uh, uh, fractionary is very unique. It does not live in a vacuum uh, a membrane bond structure. It freely lives in the cytosol, which means that this bacteria will inevitably, inevitably leak out their LPS, and then a cytosolic LPS will be recognized, directly recognized by caspase 411, and active caspase 411 will cleave gastamin D or trigger pyroptosis. And in this pathway, caspase 4 and 11 do not, do not process into leukine. So we only have cell death response out of this pathway. So this uh, work was just published uh, three weeks ago uh, uh, by uh, and the first author is uh, a postdoc fellow at Zilingi in the lab. And uh, was it, there's a really a twist in this story that when we uh, infect mice, either white type mice or caspase 11 knockout mice to block this uh, so-called non-canonical inflammatory pathway, uh, the pyroptosis pathway. We did not see a difference, although we expect that LPS from uh, Shigella will be detected or sensed by caspase 411, but we did not see uh, a, 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 a difference between white time mice between caspase 11 knockout mice, uh, uh, even for a bacterial load. And however, in a control experiment with another similar bacteria, uh, called a bucodaria. In this bacteria, this bacteria is also cytosol free living. And white time mice can survive bucodaria infection. If we knock out caspase 11, the mice succumb to the same dose of bucodaria infection. So what it, why is that? It turns out that Shigella, which is different from a bucodaria, and both bacteria will leak out the LPS, and that is sort of uh, uh, expected. But for Shigella, uh, it encodes a toxin or type 3 effector protein called uh, ASPC3. And this protein from bacteria, which is a toxin from the bacteria, it turns out this protein has a very interesting, unique activity of inactivating caspase 4 and 11. If we genetically delete the toxin from bacteria, now um, the mice can survive the infection. Basically, we delete this toxin we uh, diminish the inactivation of caspase 11 by the bacteria, and then the bacteria become uh, avalular, or this valence is reduced. Now the mice can survive, the mice can survive uh, out of the bacterial infection. If we knock out caspase 11, now the mice will succumb to the infection. So basic uh, bacterial replication is the same, supporting uh, in line with this observation. So basically, we can remove ASPC3 from bacteria. We turn this bacteria into a, a bacteria that can um, stimulate a strong caspase 11 gastrin D pyroptosis uh, 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 pathway in the mice. So uh, uh, biochemical studies suggest that this protein, uh, this bacterial protein is an enzyme. I use, um, use NAD as a ligand to modify an arginine a specific arginine in caspase 411. And this modification is a brand novel 
has never been dis discovered. So we gave a name as ADP riboxin nation. So, and indeed it took us three years to figure out, three years of hardcore biochemistry work to figure out this very uh, strange or unique post-translation of modification. Anyway, so now we have a bacteria, uh, the ASPA-C3 deletion bacteria, and this bacteria is, uh, the virulence is reduced, and this bacterial infection will stimulate the mice to, uh, uh, to, to upregulate their uh, caspase 11 mediated uh, pyroptos pyroptosis pathway. So when we measure enter uh, a Shigella IgG in the serum of the infected mice, we can see that in the white type mice, when they are infected either by white type Shigella or the RCC3 deletion mutant, with deletion mutant infection, we see a much higher level of uh, enter Shigella IgG production. And this was not seen in Caspase 11 against the MD knockout mice. So this genetic data suggests that the Caspase 11 against the MD pyroptosis pathway can uh, promote can promote the mice to uh, uh, mount uh, uh, enter Shigella uh, antibody response or humoral immunity. So this is the first time to demonstrate that the pyroptosis pathway can activate can uh, activate the uh, uh, IgG production in the adaptive immune system. So this avalian uh, ASP C3 deletion mutant basically serve as a uh, attenuated uh, 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 virulence attenuated bacteria. So give uh, immunization uh, protection effect. If we re-challenge the infected mice uh, uh, with a high dose of white type bacteria, you can see that the deletion mutant the infected bacteria have a much better protection. So basically, we we have a we have like a a vaccine like effect. And this vaccine-like effect is dependent upon gastamin D or caspase 11, because in the knockout mice, you don't see that. And uh, for Shigella, there has, uh, there's no vaccine available now. Uh, there are two, um, there are two uh, variants attenuated strains, ICSA and ICSA and GWARB8 are the two live attenuated vaccine strains uh, currently in development. So if we compare uh, uh, antibody production, of uh, the ASPC3 deletion mutant with the two uh, clinical candidate uh, strain, uh, vaccine candidate strain, you see that our mutate mutant actually stimulate a higher level of anti-IgG, anti shigella anti IgG production than the ICSA and the GWARB-A strains, both in black six mice and barbie C mice. So uh, we, if we combine our mutation, ASPC3 mutation on the background of these two uh, clinical candidate or vaccine candidate strains, you see that the antibody production level is much, much higher now. So this is a double deletion. Uh, then the, uh, uh, the, the ICSA and ASPC3 double deletion gives a, a much, much higher level of uh, 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 antibody IgG production than the ICSA stream. And uh, well, now we can see a much better uh, immunization or uh, protection effect or uh, vaccine-like protection effect if we combine uh, ASPC3 mutation onto the background of these two uh, vaccine candidate stream. So uh, this experiment not only suggests, for the first time, to suggest that the non-canonical inflammation pathway or the caspase 11 gastamin D pyroptosis pathway have a role, have a key role of uh, uh, instruct the mice to induce uh, humoral immunity to, prom uh, to promote antibody production. But this data also said provide um, uh, a rationale to design probably better design uh, uh, anti shigella vaccine uh, in the future. So uh, this, as I mentioned, that uh, the knockout, uh, the, the pyrotosis pathway will play a protective role in, uh, in antibacterial defense. Uh, that's why some bacteria have evolved a mechanism to block, to modify caspase uh, 11 and block this pathway. On the other hand, uh, uh, you know, in inflammation or immunity is always a, a double-edged sword. So if the pathway is overactivated or is out of control, it will also have, a, it will give a deleterious effect. So uh, if we give mice a really high dose of LPS to induce septic shock or endotoxic shock, in this experiment, we can give mice like a 50 milligram per kilogram. 
So the uh, LPS will activate caspase 11 gastamin D to induce pyroptosis. The white time mice, uh, they, they will die actually because hippo activation of this pathway. So low level activation of this pathway give a protective effect, but uh, excessive activation of this pathway give a deleterious effect to induce septic shock. So this data suggests that uh, systemic pyroptosis is likely the key for septic shock, um, which will further induce a cytokine storm response. So now uh, there are in, uh, efforts in the industry to target against them indeed to develop antisepsis uh, drug. So uh, as I'm, I'm talking about gastamin D now, we, we also have gastamin A, B, C, E. So this is a family of, a family of proteins. There are five members in human, A, B, C, D, E. And uh, this family of protein all share this two domain architecture, N terminal pore forming domain, C terminal inhibitor domain. Normally, the N terminal pore forming domain is auto inhibited by C terminal domain. But different from gastamin D that I just talked about, other gastamins are not, are not cleaved by caspase 1 and caspase 11. It could be cleaved by any other protease. So as long as you can cleave within this long linker region, you will activate the protein. So this suggests that uh, pyroptosis, the concept of pyroptosis has evolved. It could have nothing to do with caspase, but the, the core of pyroptosis uh, the key feature of pyroptosis is gastamin mediated program and necrotic cell death. And this family of gastamin protein is highly conserved in lower organisms, even inclu including coral and uh, hydro. And also, and there are, uh, recently there are uh, 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 papers shown that bacteria, some bacteria, a group of bacteria even have gastamin like proteins. And in, uh, in bacteria, uh, gastamin can also be activated by a proteus, and this locus uh, is uh, often next to a CRISPR locus, and here is a pore made by the bacterial gastamin. You see the very beautiful regular shape uh, of pores of bacterial gastamin, and the, the physiological function of this uh, pyroptosis or gastamin pathway in bacteria probably is involved in antiphage defense response. I think there will be a paper coming out soon uh, to illustrate this. And, uh, and there, in fungi, there are also uh, gastamin-like proteins that can also trigger fungal cell deaths. And in fungi, you have this uh, haploid to fuse into diploid. But if the genetic uh, type, uh, uh, karyotype of the uh, ha uh, haploid is not compatible, uh, when the two haploid fuse together, the diploid will die out of uh, fungal gastamin activation. So in fungi, this bacteria, uh, the in fungi, gastamin mediated cell death indeed uh, protects, uh, serve as a protection mechanism or uh, to discriminate, uh, uh, the non cell discrimination against uh, genetic incompatible uh, 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 fungal strains. So uh, now I'm going to uh, uh, talk about the role of gastamin and the pyroptosis in uh, cancer, uh, cancer immunotherapy. So, um, um, as, um, as we know that um, uh, in the apoptosis, canonical apoptosis pathway, if you trigger DNA damage, if you UV irradiate cells or treat cells with uh, DNA damage drugs, which will uh, uh, cause DNA damage, activate the mitochondrial pathway to induce caspase reactivation and then to have apoptosis. So in HeLa cells, if you uh, uh, give radiation or treated with chemo drugs, being a damaged drugs, you see HeLa cells undergo typical apoptotic cell death. You see the morphology is like a cluster of grapes. However, if we express gastamin E in HeLa cells, this is the second gastamin I talk about. We do the same treatment. You see now the cells did not shrink, but they develop a lot of bubbles and they eventually undergo uh, burst. So basically, we express, we ectopically express gastamin E in HeLa cells. Now it is switched caspase 3 mediated apoptosis to gastamin E dependent pyroptosis. And why is that? The reason is that there is a caspase 3 cleavage site in the linker region of gastamin E. And biochemical experiments confirm that caspase 3 can efficiently cleave 
full length gas domain E into two fragments, intermittent pore fold domain, C terminal inhibitory domain. Uh, the other cast base will not clean. If we make a mutation of the aspartic acid residue, so cast base three cleave of gas domain E does not involve the C terminal domain. It only recognizes the tetrapeptide motif. And the aspartic acid is key, is absolutely essential for the cleavage. You mutate the aspartic acid, you block the cleavage. So if we put this D2A mutation back into HeT cells, you can compare. This is the experiments I just showed you a minute ago. Uh, y type gas domain E was switched py to, into pyroptosis. Now this is a D2A mutation. So he, uh, on the left, you will see the cells undergo pyroptosis, right? However, with the D2A mutation, the cell death go back, goes back to apoptosis. So this suggests that it is the cleavage of gas domain E by caspase 3 that converts or switch apoptosis to pyroptosis. In fact, uh, pyroptosis is much faster than uh, apoptosis. It only requires one or two hours, but apoptosis will take more than uh, four or five hours. So, uh, but uh, the, you know, everybody knows that caspase 3 induces apoptosis, but now we are showing that caspase 3 can also induce pyroptosis. So why is that? Uh, why it is inconsistent with lots of uh, literatures? So it turns out that cancer cells or cancer cell lines, you know, we, all, we do all the experiments in cancer cell lines. Um, in, in cell lines, uh, for example, we, uh, we have profiled about 100 different cancer cell lines. Very few of them express gas domain E. Most of them do not express or express very low level of gas domain E, just like HeLa cells. So, uh, and this, it turns out that during cancer, uh, during tumor genesis, there is a programming, there is an epigenetic reprogramming that drives uh, 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 epigenetic silencing of gas domain E uh, uh, during tumor genesis. However, we have normal cells in our body that are, those are not cancer cells. Here I'm showing you five uh, normal human cells. You see three of them, like uh, uh, epidermal carotinocytes, uh, 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 carotinocytes, or placental epithelial cells, or umbilical artery smooth muscle cells. You see, they express uh, uh, endogenously uh, gas domain E. If you treat those cells with doxorubicin or give them UV or, or cisplatin, and those cells will all develop a pyroptosis. You see those big bubbles, characteristic big bubbles, right? For the, for the negative cells, gas domain E expression, negative cells, you will go into apoptosis. So this data suggests that uh, DNA damage chemotherapy or even radiation therapy used in cancer uh, uh, treatment in clinics. And those uh, 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 approach induced cell death not only involves apoptosis, which is the traditional view, but also may also, may also induce pyroptosis uh, in the real world. So just use this cartoon to summarize that. Cancer cells, most of the cancer cells have silenced the gas domain E expression. So you have this chemo drug treatment induced caspase reactivation, and then those cells die out of apoptosis. However, the normal cells, they have gas domain, some of them, not all of them, some of them they will have gas domain E expression, they will die out of pyroptosis. So uh, what's the function of this pathway, gas domain E immediate pyroptosis? So uh, it will trigger inflammatory damage it will, uh, this, uh, uh, for those chemo drugs. And it will also stimulate immune response because uh, as I mentioned that pyroptosis is the most pro-inflammatory form of cell death. And I'll, I'll go back to this point later on. So when we profile uh, our gas domain expression in those 100 cancer cell lines, we found that three of them, not only gas domain E, gas domain A and gas domain C are also silenced in cancers. Why is that? Uh, in this paper uh, published last year, uh, is a collaboration with a chemical biologist, uh, Dr. Zibo Liu uh, at Peking University. So uh, 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 Dr. Liu basically, he, uh, he designed and developed a, a, a chemical biology, a bioorthogonal uh, approach that allow us to deliver gas domine selectively, selectively into, uh, into, uh, into tumor cells, cancer cells in vivo, I mean in vivo in the, in the mice. So basically he has a chemical linker 
this chemical linker will con be conjugate to gastumin and then to nanoparticle and the cancer cells will uptake nanoparticles and he has a small molecule to cleave this linker. This is small molecule also enriched, uh, has a preference to target cancer cells. And then uh, really, uh, cleave this link or release gastumin to make pores to induce a pyroptosis and then further kill uh, 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 cancer cells. Basically, uh, he, he gives us an approach for tumor selective protein delivery or release uh, from nanoparticle conjugates. We use that to induce gastumin activation. So in this 41 uh, 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 breast cancer tumor model, uh, and day six, nine, and twelve, we we give the uh, mice uh, uh, we we give the mice uh, the 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 nanoparticle conjugated gastumin and then induce gastumin activation uh, for three rounds, right? Dif uh, at different at day six, uh, nine, and twelve, and then you at the it, we see that there's almost a complete remission, a regression of the tumors. We did a lot of other controls. I'm not going to talk about that. Statistically, you see there's a dramatic tumor regression response after three rounds of pyroptosis induction. And we also see this, uh, observe this in other uh, uh, tumor models, you know, syngenic uh, tumor models. So you might think that, well, you, you kill cancer cells, right? You don't see tumor growth anymore. So that is true, but it's not a completely true. And the, the reason for that is induction of cancer cell pyroptosis by this uh, chemical biology approach is not that efficient. We only can induce about 30% of cell deaths or pyroptosis in the cell, even in the cell culture system. And in vivo, in the tumor bearing mice, we can only kill about 10% of cancer cells. So uh, then what's the rest of the 90% of tumor cells? So we then uh, re, re uh, do the experiments uh, in the Nude mice in acythemic T cell deficient mice, you see there is no tumor regression response anymore, right? In Y type IBC mice, that there is a complete, nearly complete uh, tumor regression, but in the T cell deficient mice, there is no tumor regression. So this data clearly suggests that a few pyroptosis would trigger inflammatory response in the tumor microenvironment, and then that will remodulate the the, the microenvironment. And eventually activate the T cell induced and the tumor immunity. And this uh, reminds us that uh, uh, another phenomenon, you know, for uh, cancer immunotherapy or cancer immunity, we now trace uh, the history back to this uh, 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 doctor called uh, Bill Cowley in 1983. And he found that some of the severe cancer patients can self cured uh, be self cured from bacterial infection, uh, he, called, he later on did some uh, sort of like clinical trial experiments using so-called a uh, Kali toxin. So streptococcus, uh, streptoc uh, 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 streptococcus is a bacteria, right? A bacterial infection in that case, it seems that bacterial infection triggers the inflammatory, inflammatory response or immune response that eventually uh, uh, um, allow the cancer patients to uh, cure the cancer autonomously or on their own. Uh, you might remember at the beginning of my talk that pyroptosis was also discovered, originally discovered in bacterial infected cells. I don't know there's a connection or not. There's a, just an accidental uh, 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 happening here. There might be a connection, so we will see. And um, I think I'll, I'll, I'll skip the, the detailed uh, immunological analysis, okay. And um, in, the, in the previous experiments, we did a three rounds of induction of pyroptosis. If we reduce uh, the three rounds of pyroptosis induction or gastumin delivery into one round, we did not see the tumor regression response in this 41 uh, syngenic model. And this 41 tumor model is known to be a cold tumor, right? It does not respond to the checkpoint blockade and the PD-1 uh, therapy. However, after one, even one round of uh, uh, pyroptosis induction, we treat the mice with NPD1 uh, antibody. Now there's a dramatic uh, tumor regression response. So this data suggests that a little bit of pyroptosis will inflame, inflame the tumor, 
uh, convert the cold tumor into hot tumor that now can be uh, uh, responsive to checkpoint blockage therapy. So together, uh, this data also suggests that why we now in clinical trials, we see uh, 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 efficacy of a uh, combination of therapy between checkpoint blockade and uh, 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 chemotherapy or even radiation therapy, right? So a lot of uh, companies are looking for combination therapy. And uh, the best success now is combination with chemotherapy or radiation therapy. As I mentioned, that chemo and radiation will trigger pyroptosis uh, uh, based on our work on gastamin E. And this, uh, uh, the, the activity of, uh, of and the tumor immunity triggered by pyroptosis death also explains why tumor to, during tumor genesis and uh, cancer cells tend to silence gastomic expression if they can, uh, if it could uh, afford. Because if, if they don't silence gastomic expression, if gastomic gets activated, uh, even accidentally, it may trigger, it may trigger a potent and a tumor immunity response. So in the last few minutes, I'll, I'll talk about another work we published last year. So in this work, we show that even, uh, in fact, gastomic mediated pyroptosis also plays a role in normal and the tumor immunity, uh, immunity. So why we ask this question? So for this group of audience, we know that uh, our cancer our immunity eventually is uh, converges on activation of CD8, uh, CD8 positive uh, T cells of the kilo cells. The kilo cells will deliver uh, uh, granzymes uh, into target cancer cells. The activity of those granzymes will eventually uh, 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 induce cancer cell death. The five granzymes in human, uh, right, is 11 in mice. And those granzymes are not only responsible for killer T cells, but also for NK cells, natural killer cells, uh, to kill target cells. And the textbook will tell you that, the immunology textbook will tell you that granzymes will kill target cells by apoptosis. Is this always true? So in these experiments, uh, we use NK cells to kill 293 T cells. So this is a cell-cell killing assay. Or we load a, a fluorescent dye, a green fluorescent dye into 293 T cells. And this dye cannot, cannot get out of this 293 T cells unless the cells are lysed, unless the cells undergo lytic death. So here that you see the cell, 293 T cells looks uh, green and there's a small NK cells. NK cells will then attack 293 T cells. But you don't see, you did not see leakage of green fluorescence, which means that there is no lytic cell death. 293 T cells do not express any of the five gastomins. So no gastomin in 293 T cells endogenously. So if we express each of the five gastomin into 293 T cells, we found that in the presence of gastomin B, now uh, when NK cells attack 293 T cells, the green fluorescence will leak out. And at the same time, propylene iota uh, was, uptake, was uptaken into the dying cells. So this data suggests that expression of gastomin B in 293 T cells convert the killing of 293 T cells by NK cells from apoptosis into uh, pyroptosis. So uh, the underlying reason is very simple, that granzyme A among the five granzymes, five human granzymes, specifically, granzyme A will cleave gastamin B, gastamin B into two fragments, and terminal pore forming domain, C-terminal inhibitory domain. And the cleavage is also in the long linker region and then release and terminal pore forming domain and make pores and induce pyroptosis. So um, if we, here I'll show you five or uh, three uh, cell lines, they endogenously express gastamin B, not like this artificial 293T cells. And those are all from uh, 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 the uh, gast uh, gastrointestinal system, uh, cancer cell lines. You see uh, their high level of gastamin B expression endogenously. If you treat the cells or give the cells granzyme A, you see big bubbles, pyroptotic bubbles coming out. 
you see cleavage, very efficient cleavage of gas domain B, endogenous gas domain B by granzyme A. And the CAR T cells uh, it basically is, uh, is a hypoactivated uh, uh, kilo cells, you know, taken from uh, patients. And uh, we add, uh, add the, uh, the CD19, uh, sort of like a, a warhead, right? And then you see if we, uh, the target cells express gas domain B, uh, the CD19 CAR T cells will also induce pyroptosis. You see this uh, pyroptotic bubbles, right? You see the leakage, leakage of the fluorescence and cleavage, efficient cleavage of gas domain B. And uh, if we make a mutation, the lysine mutation to block the cleavage, you, you block the pyroptosis, right? And the TCRT cells is the same story. I'll, I'll just skip this. So basically, if the target cells express gas domain B, TCRT cells, when they can recognize the targets, the uh, 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 melanoma cancer cells, it will also induce gas uh, gas domain B cleavage and then induce pyroptosis. Well, just to summarize that, you know, uh, the uh, CD8 positive killer T cells were gen or, uh, produce interferon gamma. We also found that interferon gamma can potently stimulate uh, gas domain B transcription. Uh, you see that many of the cancer cells, normally you don't detect uh, gas domain B expression, but if you treat them with interferon gamma or even sometimes TNF alpha, you see a dramatic transcription in induction of gas domain B. So interferon gamma acting on its receptor and then will induce transcription of gas domain B. And the gas domain B gets cleaved by granzyme A delivered from the killer T cells, CD8 positive T cell. And the granzyme A cleave the linker region of gas domain B and to release the N-terminal pore forming domain and then make pores and the cancer tumor cells die out of pyroptosis, the pyroptotic death will further amplify the immune response, will further induce uh, endotumor immunity. If you recall the nanoparticle experiments I just uh, showed you. So this, uh, as a result of that, we also see this pathway, uh, interferon gamma, gas domain B, granzyme A, has a synergistic effect with the checkpoint blockade therapy in this uh, CD26 uh, 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 colon cancer uh, model in, in uh, syngenic model in mice. So uh, basically, if you have gas domain B, you convert apoptosis into pyroptosis, and that has a synergistic immune and a tumor immune response with checkpoint blockade therapy. So this uh, take together suggesting that or gas domain like B or even E may serve as a biomarker for cancer immunotherapy. You know, if we could, if we can develop a small molecules to activate a gas domain independent of anything else, and that might be a potential uh, therapeutic approach. Um, so I just acknowledge the, the student and postdoc in the lab who did all those work. Uh, Genius VHL originally uh, uh, identified a gas domain B by CRISPR screen. And uh, uh, Jing Jing, uh, a po former postdoc fellow, did the pore forming work and the structure work. And uh, the uh, Yu Peng, Wen Qing, uh, Xu Yan, they did a, a gas domain E cleavage job by, uh, by caspase 3 work. And uh, uh, Sun, uh, Sun Qi and Kong Wang did the, uh, uh, the structural work on caspase, uh, in the uh, potential peptide independent recognition of, of gas domain D by those caspase. And the last piece of uh, story was done by Zhiwei Zhou and Huang Bing, uh, Zhou, uh, Huang Bing who are in the lab. And uh, the, the, the nanoparticle work was collaboration with Qin Yang Wang, uh, the graduate student of uh, Dr. Zhu Liu's lab. Feng Chao made a lot of knockout mice for us. I'll stop here, uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, this is really fascinating. I think there's a lot of data, but I don't feel heavy at all. I mean, it's really interesting. Uh, so, okay, so um, let's start the Q&A session. If anyone have question, please put in the chat box or just to raise your hand. I can put your, um, your question to, uh, to Fong. <clears throat> so I guess I'm gonna start to kick off. Um, um, two parts, actually, I, I'm not really expert in uh, innate um, immunology, but I just have a very basic question regarding one is uh, the uh, the data you show with the HeLa cells that caspase 3 can 
can cleave the mm -hmm. gas phase E. Um, mm -hmm. But I think there's this, um, there's this, um, how to say, a two direction uh, balance in terms of apoptosis and parato uh, paratosis. Mm -hmm. so how, how the cell or how this signal determine which is dominant uh, for the cell death? Because I mean, some of the cells probably uh, possess both of the signaling pathway. Yes, uh, that's a, a good question. So basically, when you have caspase three activation, you could go, uh, you could go uh, towards uh, uh, apoptosis uh, traditionally, or you could go uh, towards pyroptosis. I think it essentially is the expression level, expression level of gastrin E in the cells, in not only here cells, in any other cells. If you don't have gastrin E expression or extremely low. And the, the cells will just go into uh, apoptosis. But if you have a high level of gastrin E expression, for example, like uh, primary cells in uh, uh, like a primary uh, uh, keratinocytes, they have very high level of gastrin E expression. They will just go straight into pyroptosis, you know, because of pyroptosis has the faster kinetics, right? And it, there is this in, in real world, there is a, it probably is more like an intermediate. Right. Uh, uh, mix the situation. So you don't have enough gastrin E expression and you see apoptotic uh, response at the beginning, but then with the time going, you know, apoptosis take five or even longer time. With time going, you just accumulate, you just accumulate the terminal cleavage fragment of gastrin E. And then at the end of apoptosis, you see bubbles coming out and the cells undergo burst. And previously, this has been observed previously quite a lot. And people call it secondary necrosis after apoptosis. So I, I think that's probably, you know, in the real world, it sometimes is a mixture. Yeah. But it's depend, I, um, it, it is determined by expression level of gastrin E mainly. But like you said, the gastrin E can, uh, can accumulate during the process of the cell yeah. death. But mm -hmm. um, is that possible during this process? Uh, somehow, there's um, uh, extrinsic signal can transcriptionally also enhance the gastrin E. That's a good question. Uh, we haven't found that there could be a transcription signal. So uh, um, in the literature, the, uh, there could be um, uh, trans transcription induction or you know epigenetic. So because uh, cancer cells. If you take cancer cell cell lines, it's very hard to see expression of gastrin E um, because the, the the promoter of this gene undergoes a, a massive uh, a methylation to silence the expression of gastrin E. So I think that makes sense. You know, the tumor cells they want to escape. They want to escape those kind of killing. You know, sure. it's basically is an inflammatory killing, right? Yeah. Yeah. There could be a transcription in, in response that has been not been discovered yet. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead um, to call the name. If you want to ask a question by yourself, are you welcome? Uh, uh, Liu Bingxu, you want to go ahead to ask question yourself? Oh, yeah, that would be great. Uh, thank yeah. you for the great talk. So basically, uh, and there's a, a lot of very, a lot of amazing these cancer models you have shown. And uh, and so the cancer model you have showed when you it's it's amazing when you just switch them to apoptosis to paraptosis just by, by just poking a hole on the cells and it just gives you a much better response. And what do you think is actually, you know, inducing a better uh, like immune response? Is it just you know you re release more of intracellular new antigen so the DC cells can you know do a better job to simulate T cells or you know or maybe there are other tonic intracellular cytokines that actually got released during this process. It'd be good to know your uh, thoughts. Yeah, um, good question. So, uh, you know, uh, the previous uh, there is a concept we call uh, immunogenic cell death, right? And pyroptosis clearly is the most <laughs> uh, immunogenic form of cell death. So it could, um, it certainly, I think uh, there are data uh, showing that it could uh, promote the release of our, our new antigen and for uh, presentation to dendritic cells. You know, if you go, if you recall, you know, I, I overload you guys, it's just too much stuff. Uh, if you recall the, the bacterial infection uh, work, we, I showed that the, 
uh, beginning that the, the pyroptosis pathway clearly can promote the antigen presentation, even in the context of uh, bacterial infection. So that could be one reason. There, there, I think there are definitely other immunological mechanisms. So the dying cells will release some uh, cytokines or some dams that will remodulate the uh, immune microenvironment. So we're working on that, but it's very difficult. You know, <laughs> it's very difficult. Yeah. The, but but do you think there's right. this? Uh, yeah, go ahead. Sorry, you think here is not L1 or L18 because supposedly, for example, in the nanoparticle experiment, <laughs> you just derived. Very good point. I don't think it's I1 or I18. So um, uh, historically, Pyroptosis was discovered in this canonical inflammasome pathway, caspase one activation, and the caspase one activation uh, will will trigger uh, what process into looking one into looking eighteen. So a lot of people read some older literatures all think that pyroptosis is 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 just associated with I one or I eighteen, and that has been uh, I think that concept has been changed because. With the discovery of gastermin, you know, there as long as you have gastermin activation, right? Uh, you may involve caspase one, you may not involve caspase one. So, yeah, I think in in the case of the the tumor data I showed, I don't think it's it's the I, I one or I eighteen. It's probably some other cytokines or and some dams. You know, pyroptosis will release ATP. You know, ATP clearly has a very important role in modulating the microenvironment. Yeah. Yeah, and. Uh, if I may, for the privilege, that uh, following trans uh, question, so when you are saying there are specifically the level of gastrin E is really important for it to determine if it's actually, you know, doing apoptosis or paraptosis. But do you think mm -hmm. here is more of a limitation of a gastrin E level, or you think it's actually, you know, something related to, for example, the enzyme activity? For example, is a uh, granzyme A uh, is actually a good uh, enzyme to cleave the gastrin E? Like for example, if you, um, if you have more efficient I, enzymes. I think, uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm glad to hear these questions, which means that my presentation <laughs> is successful. <laughs> so, um, yeah, absolutely. It's really great, right. thank you. <laughs> so, um, it's not only determined by uh, uh, the level of gastrin uh, level, it's also determined by the, uh, the granjam activity. You are absolutely right. So eventually is is what matter is what matters is how you know the level of the terminal cleavage fragment you can accumulate in the cells within a, a period of time, right? Mm -hmm. That is determined by the level of substrate and is also determined by the activity of the enzyme. You are absolutely right. Yes. Yeah, you are thinking just the 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 final deterministic factor is active. Uh, gastrin mm -hmm. concentration. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Thank you for this great talk. Really appreciate it. Okay, so next one is Gofei. You want to go ahead? I saw you just to turn on your vid your uh, camera. Uh, yeah, yeah. Thanks, thanks, Professor Shaw, for the great talk. So I wonder if there's a, have you done any work um, for gastrin E in a uh, uh, human tumor samples or PDX models? If not, are you is that uh, are you planning to do anything? Uh, we have not. Uh, we have not done. Uh, yeah. Um, so, if you look at the TCGA data, we, we actually profile a little bit on primary tumors. So clearly, uh, there is the silencing effect uh, of gastrin E in 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 the, in the uh, in the in prim even primary tumors, not only just cell lines. And besides that, we haven't done anything on that. So um, yeah, you're welcome to do that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm actually from uh, pharmacology from uh, industry. So it would be very interesting um, to have some collaboration in, in our research in this field. Thank you. Sure, sure, yeah, sure. I'll be glad to help you guys you know, if you need any information. Okay. For Whatever. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Okay. So next question from Jay. I think Jay's uh, already logged out, but I still am um, going to recite here uh, the question. What is the relationship between the MLKL mediated uh, necro necrotosis and then GSDM mediated paratosis? Mm -hmm. 
Yes, uh, MLKL is the, the most downstream component of the nicrototic pathway. So the nicrototic pathway is activated when you block caspase activation. And at the same time, you stimulate the TNF receptor re, uh, response. So, and then um, that will, you, you know, basically you, uh, from the receptor, you activate caspase eight. At the same time, you block caspase eight and that somehow uh, 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 drives uh, a complex formation between uh, RIP1, RIP kinase 1, and RIP kinase 3. And then RIP kinase 3 will fast forward MLKL. The fast forward MLKL will move to the membrane. And then other cells die out of nicroptosis. So there's not much uh, overlap or crosstalk between pyroptosis here. Yeah. Okay. So next question is from Haiwei. You want to go ahead to ask question? Okay, I'm gonna just uh, read the question. Why pyrotosis can go faster than apoptosis? Um, well, <laughs> I think intuitively it should be faster, right? Oh, uh, because <laughs> yeah. the, the downstream is only one step. You know, you cleave it, it goes, it goes to plasma membrane, make pores. But for apoptosis, you have cas like you have caspase activation. So basically. Downstream of so there, I think it, there is a mis uh, a conception in the in the in the textbook or in the in the in the literature from the nineties that we deem caspase activation, like particular caspase three activation, as the execution of step in apoptosis, so, which is not yeah, correct. Which is not correct. Sorry, uh, go ahead. Downstream of caspase three activation. There are multiple events. For example, you have a DNA fragmentation, right? And caspase 3 needs to cleave an inhibitor of an endonuclease. You have a PS flipping, right? And the caspase 3 needs to activate some uh, gram base or flipase on the plasma membrane. Then you have PS flipping. And you have the, the cells shrink, right? So uh, the cytoskeleton is disrupted downstream of caspase 3 activation. In probably some cytoskeleton protein is cleaved by uh, inactivated by caspase 3. So there are multiple events, there are multiple, multiple events downstream of uh, caspase 3 activation. And uh, in fact, if you really think deeply about apoptosis, which event is the, you know, is the, is the point that you can see is, is a determined point uh, for cell death. I, I think it, it's, a, it's more like a philosophical question. Yeah. Right? <laughs> right. Okay, so um, the next question is from Joe. Uh, you want to go ahead and ask question? Okay, I'm going to read the questions. Uh, okay, so go ahead, Joe Gang, yeah. I saw those. Uh, hi, uh, very elegant work. Uh, that's very impressive. Um, I, actually, you uh, already uh, touched upon the question I want to ask. The, my, the first question is that whether, you know, uh, how, what's the mechanism um, paraptosis induce stronger anti tumor immunity? You mentioned probably mm -hmm. it's because, you know, immunogenic cell deaths. Um, mm -hmm. So, um, and also you show that CAR T cells in your CAR T cell model, uh, your CAR T cells mm -hmm. or T cell transgenic T cells can also induce uh, paraptosis in tumor cells. In that mm -hmm. case, so um, um, uh, is there a mechanism that, uh, you know, directly affect um, the CAR T cells or the donor T cells? Um, or it has still has to go through the endogenous immune system. So that, that's one question. So related to that question is that, you know, um, for immune checkpoint block therapy, um, I think it, it's very effective in a small fraction of patients. So in those patients, those responders, do you think that, you know, somehow um, the immune cells induces paraptosis in the tumor cells? That's, that's why, you know, it's so effective. Uh, while the non-responders, maybe, you know, it's just a uh, regular, you know, apoptosis in the tumor cells. So does that mean uh, that, you know, if you stratify the patients 
you know, to say, you know, if some patients, whether they're tumor cells, um, somehow their biopsy shows that the tumor cells uh, express uh, gastrin B, and then those patients will be more likely to respond. Um, so that's uh, a second or third question is that, you know, uh, you go, uh, you mentioned the interferon gamma can induce, uh, can promote uh, peripatosis. Uh, also, you showed uh, side by side interferon gamma and TNF alpha, but you didn't go through TNF alpha. So, does TNF alpha pr promote peripatosis or it, it inhibit, inhibits peripatosis? That's my question. Um, for your uh, uh, first question, basically, is still the uh, uh, the immunological response downstream of the uh, pyrotonic uh, uh, death, right? right? So, um, yeah, uh, I mean, we don't know the complete uh, uh, mechanism out of that. You know, it could, the dying cells will release ATP, will also release HMGB1, and uh, there are probably other uh, cytosolic dams leaking out uh, from the dying, uh, from the, 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 the dying cells. And for the CAR T cells, um, and uh, for the CAR, CAR T, the cells are killing. And uh, indeed, the pyroptosis is actually, that killing is not good <laughs> for therapy. And the reason for that, you know, because now uh, for, for CAR T, uh, we only have this B, uh, CD19 or BCMA CAR T, which it was used to treat uh, uh, the uh, lymphoma, right? Uh, the, which is not solid tumor. So for solid tumor, and the pyroptosis probably is give a better or beneficial uh, immunological effect. But for for uh, uh, killing of, of of the blood, uh, uh, the the lymphoma, you know, it's it's just it's not a solid tumor. It's a circulation system, and that kind of killing, you know, you when you have pyroptosis, you leak out lots of dams, and probably may induce a cytokine storm, you know, uh, because. For this particular target cells, I mean, death is death, right? Whatever, pyroptosis, apoptosis, it's, it's, it's the same. The difference is the downstream. And if, if the, the cancer cells is, is not in this uh, microenvironment, right, like lymphoma, in the circulation system, and those leakage of uh, dams or, or other uh, pro-inflammatory factors might not be good. So that's uh, for you. Well, uh, for your, uh, to answer your first question. The second question, um, uh, we certainly think that those gastrin could be uh, uh, biomarkers for, for uh, immunotherapy. So, but I, I, I want to emphasize that, you know, uh, immunotherapy or cancer immunity is a very complicated process. I mean, this is just one step, right? We also have a lot of, lot of other steps. You know, even if you have gastrin there, you may have lots of uh, T-Rex or whatever, you know, you still can block it, right? So, um, I mean, we are only uh, showing uh, the concept, proof of concept in principle, but when it gets to real world, for to really treat patients, you have to, you, you can stratify the patients as you, you, you mentioned, but whether it will be like a, 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 that a simple scenario that all the, positive ones will respond, all the negative ones will not respond. I guess you just have to do the experiments. You know, you, can, you just have to do the uh, trials, right? Um, yeah, how about TNF alpha? You know? I'm not sure if the- Applications. Oh. Yes, so most of, we, we profile about, you know, 40 or 50 cell lines that we don't see, uh, we don't see that, uh, you know, wide expression of gastrin B. And then the reviewer, you know, just challenged us that, you know, this is probably not that important. All the pathway you show is correct, but it's not that important because you, you see, you know, among the 50 cell lines, there are only a few of them have gastrin B expression. Then we, we saw the one, there could be some regulation, we just treat we got a, we collected a panel of cytokines, not only interferon gamma TNF alpha. We, we we tried a lot of other cytokines, um, and there is a dramatic transcriptional induction. So I mean, this is the transcriptional induction. The transcriptional induction is not sufficient to induce cell death. 
you, you need a second signal from granzyme A. If you don't have granzyme A, you just express the protein, the, the, they will not die. You know, the protein is activated by cleavage. Uh, but transcription of gasoline B is controlled or is induced by interferon gamma on a TNF alpha. So TNF alpha, for example, you see if like K562 cells, interferon gamma still can induce transcription induction, but TNF alpha cannot. So we don't know the, the reason uh, for that. I mean, some cells can respond to both transcription and induction of gasoline B. Some cells only respond to interferon gamma and the extent also varies. You know, like this cell line, uh, even interferon gamma is not that efficient, but for this is HD29, interferon gamma is dramatically efficient. So uh, for the um, uh, signaling pathway of this transcription induction, we haven't gone much on that direction. Yeah. Great, thank you. Appreciate it. Okay, so I, I think before I go further, I want to check with uh, phone. Uh, you're going to be bombed with the questions. I just want to be sure you have enough time because I don't want to delay your any other events. Oh, yeah, I, I think mean, there's a lot of people okay. want to ask questions. You see, after 25 minutes, we still have 230 people online, <laughs> which is quite a record. So you want to, I want to make sure that uh, we don't delay any of your. Uh, your business. I can go on 30. I have another thing coming out. Yeah. And so we have another 10 minutes. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. Yeah. So everyone, we have another 10 minutes. I'm going to uh, try to squeeze some questions. If you are not named, please just, uh, I think you can send an email to Dr. Shao. He's, he'd be happy to answer the question. Okay. So next question uh, is, um, from WK, so he, um, the question is, uh, in the study, you found that uh, gasmin B was involved in cancer lysis. So the question is whether gasmin D, gasmin E, and the other members are also involved in this process. Since there are many gasmin molecules, what is the difference between these different molecules in those in induced uh, paratosis? Um, yes, uh, good question. We have uh, found in this in this uh, 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 immune cell killing, like T cell, NK cell killing uh, context, we haven't uh, found uh, any involvement of gastrin D or gastrin D, um, but uh, we cannot exclude uh, the possibility. So, um, but for gastrin E, for gastrin E, there is a paper. As sort of like a back-to-back -back paper from Judy's uh, Judy Liebman's lab at Harvard, and they they show that gastamin E. You know, we found that gastamin E is cleaved by a caspase three, right? And uh, among the five uh, granzymes, actually, the best study the granzyme is not granzyme A, is granzyme B, another granzyme. So granzyme B is known to activate the caspase three. So they have a paper uh, connecting uh, granzyme B, caspase three, and uh, uh, gastrin E, and also in the in the in the tumor context. So I think that you know granzyme granzyme B is probably the most dominant granzymes. So that somehow um, explains why gastrin E is more much more frequently silenced in cancers than other than other uh, uh, gastrin because gastrin E can be activated caspase three right you know caspase three can be activated by granzyme B or even other uh, many other signals yeah so uh, that's about again uh, grand uh, gastrin E uh, a gastrin A and C there are very little studies on that uh, we don't know much about that yet. Okay, so next one is C zero six. Do you want to do you want to ask question yourself? All right. So I think this is going to be the last question. Everybody else, I'm sorry. So <laughs> when it's really popular, you have to find another time to send I send his uh, him an email about your question. So I think C zero six ask question: Paratosis could turn cold tumor to hot tumor. How about uh, paratosis? in inflammation-associated cancer like colon cancer? 
Um, so the experiments I, I showed, uh, um, basically, you know, we have, uh, you know, we already have a tumor, right? And then if you, in some way, you can, uh, you can uh, enforce the tumor cells to undergo pyroptosis or whatever, you, you trigger an immune res response. I think we have to distinguish it. We have to distinguish it, the therapy, you know, uh, which it happens after you have a big uh, tumor growing there. Right. And the process of tumor genesis, you know, from a single cancer stem cells into a big growing into a big tumor. In that process, in that process, uh, there could be a possibility that the inflammation, a little bit of inflammation triggered by, by uh, pyrotosis may have a promoting effect. You know, inflammation is complicated, right? Yeah. Uh, there is a theory that uh, cancer associated inflammation is sometimes you need a little bit of some kind of inflammation to promote the tumor genesis. I think that is uh, that is uh, possible, but um, you just have to um, you know study it in the particular context. It's hard to general you know, have a generalized concept for uh, everything. I agree. Okay, so I'm gonna let you go. So there's still a ton. Okay, of questions. thank you, Brian. Yeah, mm -hmm. thank you so much for doing mm -hmm. this. I really appreciate it. So uh, hopefully mm -hmm. I see you soon in person. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.